Yeah, well, thank you very much and good morning, everybody. Uh, a lot of well-known faces, which is always a pleasure. Uh, I want to talk... Okay. I won't go there. Uh, I want to talk about uh, refueling stations, hydrogen refueling stations for fleet applications. But before I do that, let me give you a bit of information about who we are. Um, okay, now we have the... Doesn't seem to work, can we? Uh, okay. So, um, we are a company located in Burgwede, which is pretty nearby Hanover, right in the suburbs of uh, Hanover, roughly 80 employees at the moment. I think we're a pretty good example of uh, typical German Mittelstand. We are a system provider for turnkey solutions in the gas business, and gas can be, well, almost a uh, anything. It can be span gas, calibration gas, CNG, and most certainly also hydrogen. Um, we have a couple of uh, business fields, but today I want to focus solely on hydrogen activities. And in this field, we do provide test benches, contract testing services, but also infrastructural solutions. And infrastructural solutions, this means basically hydrogen re uh, refueling. So if we talk about infrastructure, I would like to show you the current situation in Germany at the moment. Uh, this is basically what's been going on for the last couple of years. So uh, I think it's quite tremendous uh, what we have achieved uh, in the last couple of years. But if you look at the right hand side of the slide, you see the goal that we're aiming at. And even with this final state, it's pretty clear that we're far cry from comprehensive in infrastructure in Germany. And if you want to remedy this, one of the possible options is that you take a look at decentralized green hydrogen refueling stations. Uh, what is this important for? Well, most certainly for all kinds of fleet applications. We need, in this case, decentralized refueling stations, but also to be able to provide hydrogen in more rural areas so that we can, in the end, achieve really a comprehensive nationwide uh, network of refueling stations. Um, if we, if we go there, this basically allows us to use green energy, renewable energy, and we can, well, get away from gray, energy, uh, gray hydrogen, which is at the moment mostly produced in petrochemical refineries, which is fine at the moment, but I think it's pretty clear that if we want to go to renewable energy transition, this can't be the way. Um, of course, this also gives you a, a bit of independence from the gas companies if you have your own local um, hydrogen gen generation, which is mostly important for uh, commercial clients. And it also enables you to uh, realize local concepts for municipalities, for public tra uh, transport, and so on. So at what kind of markets do we look? Well, I already mentioned public transport. And if we talk about public transport, we basically mean buses. Buses, uh, municipal applications. This might be cleaning vehicles, for example, commercial fleet operations. Think about postal services, think, uh, think about passenger transportation. Um, most of these service providers actually um, use at the moment either combustion engines or battery vehicles. But there's a huge potential here for hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. And there's a lot of exciting developments at the moment. So I think we will really uh, see some change there. Logistics, so think about trucks at dispatching companies. Think about forklifters at big distribution centers. Automotive R&D fleets for prototype uh, developments. Uh, you can think about a whole range of applications, boat refueling. Um, the one common thing for all of these applications is that in most of these cases, we talk about heavy duty, light duty vehicle applications. And this is really where hydrogen and fuel cell uh, propulsion really makes the most sense at the moment. So these are the markets. What is our concept then? Um, Yeah, it's a bit tricky to get the next slide. This is basically our concept of a decentralized green refilling station. Obviously, the starting point is some kind of renewable energy. Here in the northern part of Germany, we have a lot of wind energy, but you don't, you're not restricted to that. You can use photovoltaics, you can have a water power plant, whatever is available. Um, then the next step is that you use this renewable energy for electrolysis basically to split water into hydrogen and, uh, and oxygen. Then you take the raw hydrogen from the electrolyzer, feed it to the actual refueling station, and then the refueling station provides 
the hydrogen in the appropriate uh, pressure to, to the vehicle. So that's the basic concept and obviously one of the key elements here is the, the coupling element of electrolysis. And for this part, we teamed up with uh, IAV, um, which uh, yeah, some, some colleagues joined us today here, which is fine. Uh, IAV, they developed a new concept for an alkaline uh, electrolyzer. Uh, why alkaline electrolyzer? Well, basically, it's robust. It's proven technology. And our focus here was to get a solution which is very cost efficient. And at least at the moment, uh, alkaline electrolysis is then uh, the option to go to. Uh, we can offer two options here, either with 150 or 300 kilowatts, which translates into seven or 70 or 140 kilograms of hydrogen per day. Um, the whole thing is put into containers then, which also may contain additional modules for, for example, gas purification, um, pre-compression up to 80 bars, everything which is necessary to be able to connect it to the actual fuel, uh, refueling station. The refueling station then, of course, contains um, a lot of additional equipment like, like compressors, like storage buffers, uh, automation systems. And this is really where the expertise of Jack is. So this is our core business. Uh, and what we do construct, we can design and, and deliver units for either 350 or 700 bars. So we talk about uh, fueling of passenger cars or uh, heavy or duty vehicles. Total fueling capacity can be up to 140 kilograms per day. That is basically limited by the capacity of the electrolyzers uh, that, that we use. Um, the whole system is designed for independent operation. That means you don't need any cooling water, you don't need any pressurized air. That is all integrated into the system. And it, of course, it's completely CE certified, so we make sure that the system's, system is compliant to all relevant uh, regulations like uh, pressure equipment directive or um, explosion protection requirements. So that is our concept for, for a localized um, decentralized hydrogen refueling station. And um, this is just a short summary of the advantages. First of all, you generate your hydrogen right at the site of uh, consumption. And that means you get a cost, uh, uh, a cost advantage here because you save the transportation costs of the hydrogen. You utilize renewable energies that otherwise may go wasted. Um, the system is very flexible due to its uh, modularity. So for example, if your fleet network is growing, it's very easy to extend the capacity of the refueling stations just by adding additional modules. Um, we basically customize these systems to the application at hand. So it's not like we just take a product off the shelf uh, and tell the customer, well, that's what it is, take it or leave it. No, we take a look at the application and design it for this application. Compact system and also very important, this is a smaller scale system. You might have realized that by uh, looking at the numbers of hydrogen that we produce, 70 to 140 kilograms per day. So there are much larger systems in the market, but we really take a look here at the smaller systems because then the investment threshold is low enough for, pe uh, for people really uh, to, to have an incentive to extend um, the infrastructure network of hydrogen av availability. That's it from my side. Uh, our booth is right around the corner, so if you have any additional questions or need further information, um, feel free to come over. We'd be happy to welcome you at our booth. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tino Lehmann. Are there any questions from the audience right now? Okay. So, if not, I'm wondering, how is it, how fast can you build up such a refueling station. So because you said it's customized, how long does it take? Well, for a pretty fairly system, uh, fairly standard system, um, I'd say something like 12 months at the moment. It depends on our situation at that point in time and also on the specific configuration, but that's a good um, rough, rough estimate. 12 months? Yeah. Okay. okay. And then the second question, I saw the German market. Um, are you only in Germany or are you also doing other markets 
No, if there is no, interest? Absolutely not. We cater to the international markets. We are actually right now in, in discussions to uh, build two uh, fueling stations in the UK. We also have a strong presence in the US, so uh, we are absolutely not limited to the, uh, to the German market. Good to know, I think also for all our listeners. Thank you very much for your time and your presentation. Thank you.